Hello, and in this video we're going to talk about logarithmic functions. The first question many people ask is why do, why do we use logarithms? What are they used for? Well, a logarithmic function is basically um, an inverse of an exponential function with the same base. So we use logarithms to help us solve for exponents that are unknown. So if we don't know the exponent, like 2 to the x equals 7, and we don't want the x's, we can use logarithms to help us solve that because they, are, they undo exponential functions. So first we want to learn how that happens or how we write that. Um, there are two different forms for um, logarithms and exponential function. There's an exponential form, which is base to an exponent equals a number, or the logarithmic form of that would be log. They have the log here. The base is the same as this base over here. The number is the same as the number here, and the exponent is what the logarithm equals. So first task is just being able to convert from one form to the other. So they're going to ask you to convert from one form to the other. For example, we have a function that's written as a logarithmic function, like log base p of v equals x, then we can rewrite this in exponential form. As p as the base is p, the exponent is x, and the number that it equals is v. So we can convert log form into exponential form and vice versa. If we have the form 2 to the x equals 7, and we want to convert it into the logarithmic form, we'd be saying that's log base 2 of the number 7 equals x. So if we can evaluate this logarithm, we have the answer for this variable. So this is why it's very helpful. We will be able to solve this um, expression and convert. Okay, so we're using this conversion method. So if we see it in this form, base exponent number, we do the same thing, but we, we have the inverse. So it's base number exponent on logarithm base number exponent. Okay. Now, after the conversion, there's going to be some properties that we need to know. So some of the properties here are the inverse property, the exponent property, and the change of base property. So this is how we're going to evaluate that problem up above. We're going to change the base and use our calculator. So we're going to do that exact problem using this change of base formula. Now the inverse property just says if we have the same bases, they undo each other and we're left with the exponent here, or the value of the logarithm. Now this is the other logarithm base that we're using. This is log any base. This is specifically the base of e, and this is base e also. That's called the natural logarithm. So base e is a natural logarithm, and base 10 is a common logarithm. Base 10 is common logarithm. And base e is natural logarithm. We use base 10 because we have a counting system of base 10, and we use base e because that's a continuous growth model. So it's, it deals with continuous growth, something that we talk about in nature. Okay, so we're going to go back to this problem right up here that I wrote, and we're going to use this change of base problem to, f to evaluate this. So if we can write this in here by change of base, then we can write this as log of 7 over log of 2. Or we can write this as ln of 7 over ln of 2. Now your calculator will have these two basic logarithms built in. The base 10 and the base e are built into the calculator. Let's take a look at a calculator here. We'll bring up the a graphing calculator. This uh, scientific ones have the same 
type of keyboards. On this one, the base, the logarithms are right here. You can see them on the left. It's log base 10 here and ln that's base e. So if we were going to evaluate this problem right here and find out what the power would be, 2 to what power is 7, we can kind of guess what that is. 2 to the second is 4, 2 to the third is 8, so it's between 2 and 3. It's pretty close to 3 probably. 2 to the second is 4 and 2 to the third is 8 and this number 7 is closer to 8 so it's going to be closer to 3 but it's somewhere between 2 and 3. So let's take a look and use our change of base to figure that value out. So we do that. Here's our calculator. Um, we can either type in um, log 7 divided by log 2 Oh, and get an answer. So that answer is 2.8. As I said, it was closer to, so we're going to say this is approximately 2.8. Um, we go to four decimal places, 2.81 to 8074. 8074. Okay, now if we use the same process but we want to use the other base logarithm ln we can, should get the same answer as I said here it gives you the same answer ln of 7 divided by ln of 2 and we get the same answer 2.8074 rounded and it's all the way out to the, the calculator's decimal place it's the same okay so change of base can be used by either one both of these are built in we don't have base 2 on our, cal on our calculator built in. We don't have base 3. We don't have any of those other bases, so we have to use this change of base to help us solve that. The other property is the exponent property. <coughs> it helps us move the exponent down in front so that we can then evaluate this using change of base and figure out what x is. Okay. So that's what the exponent property does. It allows you to move the exponent in front of the logarithm and make it a product. Okay, so we're going to, we went over evaluating logarithms on the calculator, and we went over the three properties. Now we're going to do some solving of logarithmic equations. Okay, so we're going to start with the basic logarithmic equations. These we won't have to do much but convert. We'll do some more difficult ones later when we have more properties of logarithms than the three basic ones. But let's just take a look at this. So if we have log base 5 of x equals negative 1, we should be able to solve this by converting specifically. So if we convert to the other format, because we don't know what this is, we know that this is the base, 5. We know this is the exponent, negative 1 equals the number here which is x. So our answer to this is 5 to the negative 1 power or 1 fifth. If you use your calculator you get 0.2. So that's how we can convert it directly to a, an exponential form and solve it. So any one of those that's how we would do that. If we had something that's not a log that was written like ln of x equals negative 2. We would still convert it, but the base on this one, since ln, the base is actually not written, but it's e. So this would be e to the negative 2 would be equal to x. And that would be an irrational number. We'd have to figure that out. We'd use our calculator. Um, I'd use second this, so I get e to the power, and then I put in negative 2 and I get 0.1353 approximately. So approximately Okay, for this one. Now, if we don't see a number, but it's the other logarithm that we don't see a number under, that's usually just log. Log of x equals 
say two, that would convert to, since there isn't one there, but it's LOG, not LN, that's going to be base 10, because it's a common logarithm. So we'd convert it to 10 to the second power equals X, or X is 100. Okay. So we can do that simple conversion. Now, we can also uh, um, solve simple logarithms that, uh, that are not equations. So if they don't give you this value, but they give you these two values, we should be also be able to solve those logarithms. Let's move this down, do a couple more examples. So um, if they don't give you the value here, but they write it as just something like um, log base 3 of 27, and they say, find out what that is. Well, this is really, we don't know what this is, so we'd write it as log base 3 of 27 equals x, and we'd solve. So this would be 3 to the power of x equals 27. So we're looking for the power of 3 that gives you 27, and we know 3 to the third equals 27. So the answer to this is 3. A logarithm always equals the exponent. It's the exponent of this value that gives you this number. Okay, so if I have another example that's a little bit more difficult, maybe, um, if I say uh, log a 6 of 1 over 36. So we have to recognize this is a power of 6. When we're doing this, we need to look at this as a power of 6. Now, we can always simplify this by just change of base. Right? We can change a base on this. This is log of 1 over 36 over a log of 6. That's the change of base. So if we did that, that would give us the answer in our calculator. But if we can recognize this is a power of 6, this is actually log a 6 of 6 to the power of negative 2. Since these bases are the same, we can then reduce that out, and the answer is going to be negative 2. These are going to have the same answer if you use the change of base, or if we made this a base that matches this one, and use the reduction, that property up here that says inverse property. We're doing this, this property right here on the second type. Okay, so those are the two types of solving of logarithms. Sometimes they'll give you an X in it, sometimes they won't. You'll have to write the X and try to figure that out. Okay, the properties we're going to use mostly are change of base and identity properties. Okay, so the next part of this is solving exponential equations. So this is like this problem up here. It's going to be exactly like this one here. This is solving an exponential equation right here. We did that in this example. So this is one type of problem we'd see. Other types of problems we'll see um, would be something that's a little bit more complex than that, maybe. So um, an example here might be e to the 5x equals 24. So something like that. Then we're going to convert again because we don't know the exponent. We need to be in any other form so that we can write this. So this is going to be log base e, because that's the base of 24 equals 5x, the exponent. So this can actually be written just as ln, because that's what log base e is. And we have this equation, log ln of 24 equals 5x. So x is going to be ln of 24 divided by 5. And we can do that on the calculator. Um, ln 24 divided by 5 is 0.6356 approximately. 0.6356 approximately. Or this is the exact answer. Okay. So we can do it like that. Um, if we have a base that's not an E base, we're still solving for that. Maybe um, 4, 4 to the 
uh, 2x minus 3 equals 44. So again, we're going to convert. All right, because it's base exponent number, we can do that conversion, but you have to have those three things before you can do that. So it'd be log base 4 of 44 equals 2x minus 3. Now, in order to solve this, we're going to have to do a change of base, log 44 divided by log of 4 is going to be this value. And then we would just use algebra to solve this for x. So we're going to divide, or I'm sorry, we're going to add 3. And then we're going to divide by 2. So we're going to take this whole answer and, and multiply it by 1 half. This is dividing by 2. Log 4 plus 3. So this is what x equals. And we can use our calculator to estimate what that is. So log 44 divided by, oops, parentheses divided by log of 4. And then we're going to add 3. We're then going to divide it by 2 or multiply by 1 half. And we get an answer of 2.8649. 2.8649 is our approximate answer. 2.8649. Approximately that exactly this. Okay, now if we don't have a base exponent number, we have to get it into that form. We need a base exponent number so we can convert. So if we don't have that, then we have to do some manipulation. So I'm going to give you one more example where we would have to do some manipulation before we can solve it. So let's take a look at this example. All right, so um, uh, 2 times 1.08 to the 4x equals 7. So first we have to do one thing before we can actually solve this. We have a base, uh, an exponent, a number, and another number. So we have to get rid of this number. We have to write it so it's just base. Um, before we convert it to logarithm. We need to write it so it has one base, 1.08 to the 4x power equals 7 divided by 2. We divide both of those by 2. So we have base exponent number. So then we can write as log, log base 1.08 of 7 over 2 equals 4x. And we can solve that by the change of base again. We write as log of 7 over 2 divided by log of 1.08 equals 4x. And then we would divide by 4 and multiply by 1 fourth. Since we already have a fraction there, I would multiply by 1 fourth. And this is our exact answer for x. And if we wanted to find the approximate answer, we would use our calculator to do that. So uh, log of 3.5 because that is 7 over 2 divided by log 1.08 um, equals and then we want to divide that answer by 4 or multiply by 1 fourth so we got 4.0965 4.0965 is our approximate answer 4.0965 is our approximate answer and our, our complete answer that's not rounded is this one. Okay, so that's solving using the properties um, for exponents. All right, we have two more things to do here in this section. Um, we'll move to the next page. We want to look at the different models, the different intervals, of the growth and decay models here. Then we want to 
um, change between these forms. Maybe we want a continuous model, maybe we want a yearly model, maybe we want a monthly model. So we need to know how to be able to do that in case they ask if you want a yearly model or you have a continuous model and you want to change it to a yearly model, what does that look like? Okay, so our yearly model is just going to be f of t equals um, uh, a times b to the t. Okay, so that's also written as a times 1 plus r to the t power. r is the um, rate of growth or decay. Decay would be minus. If it was, if it was decaying, it would be 1 minus r. Monthly, we would change this. We'd use the same format here. It's going to be the same format. It's going to end up in the same format, but this form changes. So the b here on this one is 1 plus r or 1 minus r if it's decaying. On this monthly one we would change it to 1 plus mm. r divided by 12 and 12t here goes as a power. Okay, So we would still convert it to this but we would have to evaluate all of this part to get b. So b here on this one, b is equal to 1 plus r over 12 to the 12th power. That's what b is. Okay, for um, daily, um, we have the same model, but we're using 365 for days. 365. 365 t. So that means b here is 1 plus r over 365 to the 365th power. So in this case, b is going to be this part right here. Okay, now continuously we, keep, we make this go to a large number. That makes it um, basically change to an e value. So in this case, we're going to get a times e to the kt here. So this part right here is equal to b. So this part right here. So b equals e to the k. All right. Now if we're going to change forms we would use this to make sure we can change this form to um, a to the Bt. Now, in order to change it to the other form, we would have to do the inverse of this. We would have to find the k value. So in order to do that, we would, we would convert this to find the other form. So in converting this, we would be log base E of B equals k. So ln of B equals k. So these are the two formulas that I would use to do the conversions between the two forms. Okay, now let's do an example of that so you can see how this works. So if I have f of t equals um, 400 and 1.06 to the t power, and I want to convert it to the continuous model. So this is the yearly model. Yearly. Okay, it's 6% growth per year. Okay, and if I want to change it to the continuous model, then what I want to do is I want to take um, this right here and find out what k is. So my other model here is f of t equals 400 e to the sum power t. Now we need to find that. Now that power is found by using this formula. We know what the base is. In this case, the base is 1.06. If we take the ln of 1.06, we get the k value, which is what goes in this box is k. All right, so we just use my calculator here. And we take the natural log of 1.06. 
0.506. So 0.58. Okay, so this one's going to be 0.058. Uh, three, if we round to four. So k equals zero point zero five eight three. So this is actually the continuous growth rate. You can see the yearly rate is six percent, but the continuous growth rate is five point eight three percent. So it's growing five point eight three continuously, but six percent per year. Okay, so this is the model that I would convert it to now if I have this in reverse. I'm doing this in reverse, um, for example, and I'm given um, a function that has 772 um, e to the point four five t and I wanted to change it to the other format which is 772 and then we go on to fill this in with some number. Well, that's, I think that you can see this one more readily or easier because this part right here of the function is always going to be just replaced with what's in this parentheses. So we're going to take e to the 0 0.45 and we'll get b here. And that's the formula I have right there. b is equal to e to the k value. And that's what we have here, e to the k value. All right, so we just take our calculator, we do that as well. So here I have to have second, then this to get an E, 0.45, and that gives me 1.5683, 1 1.5683, 1.5683, 1.5683. So basically this is saying 45% growth continuously, but we're saying 56.8% every year. So it's growing more per year than it would be continuously, just that that's what would make sense. All right, so the last thing in this section is to use these to solve problems. So if we're going to solve a problem, we're going to use this type of problem. So we've done this before, but these problems are similar to the previous ones, except we used Desmos to graph them to solve. This way we're not going to use Desmos, we're going to actually use the properties. So here's an example. Okay, my example is I have um, 400 as my starting value at nine, uh, let's say 1992 uh, grows growing at rate of 2.3 percent yearly when when will population reach 550. Okay, so we're just going to use the simple formula. We have f of t equals 400 is our starting value. We're growing at a rate of 2.3 percent, so 0 0.23, oh, sorry. That's 23%. So in this case, 0 0.023 to the t power. So this is my equation. And I can simplify that as saying 400, 1.023 to the t power equals f of t. Now we want to know when it equals 550. So we want to know when this equation equals 550. So what we're doing is we're solving this equation right here. We have the function, but it's equal to a certain number. Okay, now we can either reach this population or exceed it. You do it the same way. If it says when will a population exceed 550, you say the same thing. 
you'd solve it the same way. You're just going to say after this time instead of at this time. All right, so we're solving this. So the first thing I would do, going back to my example, is to divide by this number because I need a base exponent number. I have two numbers here. I don't know, so I need to get rid of those and make them one. So the first step in this process is to divide by 400. So I get 1.023 to the t equals 550 divided by 400. Okay, reducing gives me this. 5 goes into that 11 times, 5 goes into that 8 times, so it's 11 eighths. So we would then convert it, so log base 1.023 of 11 eighths equals t. So this is going to tell me what time it's going to be, and then we're going to add that to the value of 1992, because we started at 1992 being 0 for t. Okay, so... And, and I'm going to just use a change of base. Log of 11 eighths divided by log of 1.023. And we're going to get a decimal for that. So log of 11 eighths divided by um, log of one. 0.023 is going to be 14 approximately 14.00 so we're going to say 14 so it's going to be 14 years after 1992 14 years after 1992 so that'd be um, 2006 All right, would be my answer. So in the year 2006, we'd reach this population of 550, starting at 400. Okay, so if we have another value, we may have to do it in a different way. So um, if we had an example where they gave us ordered pairs, we'd still use that type of problem to solve this method. We're going to use this method on the problems that we've had in the past instead of graphing this. In the past we graphed this and we graphed this and we saw where it crossed. Now we're going to use logarithms to solve it. That's the only difference. You've seen these problems before. It's just this is a different method to solve.